Good morning, so here we come up with the elbow joint definition, articulating surfaces, fibrous capsule and synovial membrane. So in the elbow joint, in the definition, this is very important. Basically, this joint is comprising of three anatomical structures and these three structures will be the humero ulnar joint between humerus and ulna the humero radial joint between humerus and radius and superior radio ulnar joint the superior radio ulnar joint and these three joints together they are called cubital articulations cubital articulations so basically this is the anatomical structure of a elbow joint consisting of three subdivisions three types of joints all together they are called cubital articulations but for functional consideration for functional purposes this joint will include only two joints and these two joints will be the humero ulnar joint and the humero radial joint so these two joints will be considered for functional consideration so therefore Basically, when these three joints are considered as cubital articulations, it will function as a compound variety of synovial joint. When cubital articulations are considered, it will function as a, it will be the compound variety of synovial joint. But when we consider humero ulnar and humero radial joint as elbow joint, then it will function as again synovial variety but hinge variety of synovial joint so therefore elbow joint is considered as the hinge variety of synovial joint we consider it as of course a compound synovial variety but basically we consider it as a hinge variety of synovial joint so these points are included within the definition now we come to articulating surface is very important we draw one line diagram please come on this side so we are going to draw, this will be the lateral epicondyle, over here we show the medial epicondyle, then on the lateral side we show capitulum of the humerus, of course this is the humerus, lateral epicondyle, this will be the medial epicondyle, this will be the capitulum, over here we will show the trochea and present between capitulum and trochea we show a small groove a fissure like groove here we show this groove or fissure and that is present between capitulum and trochea very simple now just lower down below the capitulum we draw the head of the radius, the neck and then we draw the body of the radius. This is how we draw. Below the trochlea we draw the similar reciprocal surface of the trochlea of the ulna. So this will be ulna and here this is a similar reciprocal surface of the trochea of the ulna, trochea notch of the ulna. So therefore, this is the ulnar tuberosity of course. Now, this line diagram of elbow joint is complete. See the points capitulum, trochea, lateral epicondyle, medial epicondyle of the humerus below, head of the radius, the radius bone, upper end of the radius, the ulna, upper end of ulna the trochlear articular surface. Now, we discuss the articulating surfaces. The articulating surfaces, first we discuss the humero ulnar. In humero ulnar articulating surface, the upper articular surface is formed by trochlea of the humerus. And this trochlea is fully shaped. Similarly, the trochlea is divided by a vertical groove into medial and lateral parts or in some books they have mentioned it as the medial edge, lateral edge or medial flange, lateral flange. 
the medial flange of trochlea will be around 6 mm longer than the lateral flange of trochlea. So, trochlea is fully shaped. Now, situated above the trochlea of the humerus, there are two fossae. One fossa anteriorly, another fossa posteriorly. This is anterior view. So, anteriorly the fossa which is situated above the trochlea and that fossa, if I just show it over here, this fossa will be known as the coronoid fossa. So, here this is the coronoid fossa. Similar fossa which will be situated posteriorly, posteriorly in the lower end of humerus just above the trochlea will be olecranon fossa. So, if I show with shadow, it will be like this. This shadow line will show olecranon fossa which is situated posterior to the humerus. So, these two fossae that is coronal fossa and olecranon fossa are situated just above the trochlea of humerus. Coronal fossa in the anterior surface above trochlea and olecranon fossa in the posterior surface above the trochlea of the humerus. Now, olecranon, the coronal fossa, first of coronal fossa anteriorly will receive coronal process of ulna during flexion and the olecranon fossa which is situated posteriorly will receive the olecranon process of the ulna during extension of elbow joint. So, here these are the upper articulating surface of which joint? Humero ulnar joint. Now, lower articulating surface of humero ulnar joint. This humero ulnar joint lower articular surface is formed by reciprocally saddle shape, reciprocally saddle shape, trochlear notch of ulna. So, it is called reciprocally saddle shape. This is the trochlear notch of ulna. This will form the lower articular surface of the humero ulnar joint. Now, we come across to radio, the humero radial joint. In the humero radial joint, this is the ball and socket variety of the synovial joint, ball and socket variety, in which ball is formed by capitulum of the humerus and the upper concave, where my finger is there, upper concave surface of the head of the radius will form the socket. So, therefore, capitulum of the humerus and the upper articular surface concave of the radius will form ball and socket variety of humeroradial joint. Now, here also, just above the capitulum, there will be one small fossa and that small fossa, I will show it like this. This fossa will be known as radial fossa, coronoid fossa radial fossa. Radial fossa is situated above the capitulum and this radial fossa will receive the margin of the head of the radius during flexion of the elbow joint. Similarly, the last point in the articulating surfaces of humero radial joint is regarding this groove. This groove which is separating capitulum and lateral edge of trochlea or lateral flange of trochlea in the humerus. This group will receive the peripheral rim or peripheral margin of the head of the radius during flexion to prevent the medial dislocation of the head of radius, medial dislocation of head of radius. So, this much is about the articulating surfaces. Remember we have discussed the articulating surfaces of two sub joints and they are humero ulnar, humero radial. Now we come to a very important structure capsular ligament, the capsule covering the elbow joint. So here we enter the ligaments of the elbow joint and as usual whenever we enter the ligaments of synovial variety of joint, we first start with capsular ligament, second is synovial membrane. So in the capsular ligament, very simple and very easy to understand. This capsule will be attached in such a way that anteriorly and posteriorly to the elbow joint it is very thin to allow flexion and extension. But laterally the capsule will be thickened by collateral ligaments. 
So the lateral portion of the capsule of the elbow joint is taken by collateral ligaments and the anterior and posterior part of the capsule covering the elbow joint will be thin to allow flexion and extension movements of the elbow joint. Please note down. Very important sentence. Second, now the attachment. The capsule proximally will be attached to the lower end of humerus. So, it will attach to the lower end of humerus in such a way that it will include the three fossae. Which three fossae? Coronoid fossa, radial fossa, and olecranon fossa. So, therefore, this is the radial fossa, coronoid fossa, and posterior the olecranon. So, our capsule is including all the three fossae, anteriorly as well as posteriorly. The fibrous capsule which is covering the elbow joint proximally will include all the three fossae. Simply you have to note down this question, this sentence is asked as one mark question answer or MCQ. But it will exclude these two epicondyles. So the fibrous capsule will not cover the lateral and medial epicondyle. So in this way the fibrous capsule will move. This is how the fibrous capsule will be attached. So therefore, once again I repeat, this is very important. Fibrous capsule of the or capsular ligament of elbow joint proximally will be attached to the lower end of humerus in such a way that it will include the three fossae, coronet fossa, radial fossa and olecranon fossa, but it will exclude the medial epicondyle and lateral epicondyle of the humerus. Lower down, the capsule will be attached to the humero ulnar articulation. At what point? It will be attached to the articular margin of the trochlear notch of the ulna. Very simple. So, distally, this is distal attachment. Distal attachment on the ulnar part, humeral ulnar segment, the capsule will be attached to the articular margin of the trochlear articular surface of ulna. Articular margin of the trochlear articular surface of the ulna. Second, it will be reflected to the radial side in such a way that it will be attached to the annular ligament which is covering the superior radio ulnar joint. So, if I show the thickening over here, this thickening will be of annular ligament. This is the thickening of annular ligament. So, the capsule distally over the humeroradial joint will be attached to the annular ligament. This is what you have to note down about the attachment of the capsule distally. So here I am going to just mark the annular ligament of which joint? Superior radial nerve joint. Superior radial nerve joint, annular ligament. And this attachment is about the capsule or it is known as capsular ligament or fibrous capsule. Here we complete the capsular attachment of the elbow joint. Now, we discuss the synovial membrane. How is synovial membrane attached to the elbow joint? In order to understand, please come on this side. Just one coronal section here. This will be the coronal section of the humerus. Remember, this is the coronal section of the humerus, lower end of humerus. These are the fossae. This will be radial fossa and olecranon fossa. If I show this as the lower end, trochlear notch. So, coronoid fossa, radial fossa on this side and olecranon fossa. And here if I show in this way, if I show the trochlear notch of the ulna, this is how I will show. So, this structure will be the sagittal section in which we are showing the elbow joint from one side, sagittal section and lower end of the humerus we are going to show. This will be the coronoid fossa depression. Over here, olecranon fossa, this depression and this is the trochlear notch of the ulna. Very simple. Now, we just show the fibrous capsule so, this fibrous capsule as this fossa are included, we show the attachment of the fibrous capsule in this way. Fibrous capsule is attached. Then, we show the articular cartilages and the articular cartilages which are covering here, we show that 
the lower end of this surface is covered by this articular cartilage. Lower end of the humerus is covered by the articular cartilage. Similarly, here also in Alna we show the articular cartilage which is covering the articular surface of the ulna. These two are articular cartilages. So therefore, now we show that the synovial membrane which will cover, the synovial membrane which will cover the fibrous capsule will be covering in such a way that number one, it will line the inner part of the fibrous capsule. This is where I am lining the synovial membrane, inner layer of fibrous capsule, number one. Number two, it will line the parts of the bone which are present within the capsule. This is number two. So it is lining the part of the bone which is present within the capsule. Lining the part of bone which is present within the fibrous capsule. Number three, it will stop at the articular cartilage. So <coughs> it is not covering the articular cartilage, it is stopping at the peripheral portion of articular cartilage, like this. And number four, the fossae, coronoid fossae, the coronoid fossa, allogranular fossa as well as the radial fossa, all the three fossa are covered by pair of synovial, uh, uh, some synovial fat. So this synovial fat which are present in the fossa will be covered by synovial membrane. So therefore, these fat of fats which are present in coronoid fossa, allogranular fossa and radial fossa, they are extra synovial. So if I show this bed of fat over here, if I show here this bed of fat, these are the bed of fat which are covering the fossa, which are present in the fossa, which is covered by synovial membrane. And therefore, this is where you have to mark, this will be the capsule, and here you have to mark the synovial membrane. Four important points of synovial membrane you have to mark, and those four points will be number one, Synovial membrane will line the inner part of fibrous capsule. Number two, it will line the part of the articular surface of the bone which is present within the fibrous capsule. Number three, it will not line the articular cartilages. That means it will stop at the periphery of the articular cartilages. And number four, the three fossae, coronoid fossa, Radial fossa and olecranal fossa are covered by the synovial pad of fat. So, in number four, it is covering those pad of fat, the synovial membrane. This synovial membrane is covering those pad of fat, that is number four. So, therefore, the pad of fats, these fats are extra synovial. Although the three fossa are covered by fats, but they are extra synovial because they are covered by synovial membrane. So, here, these four points you would remember about synovial membrane. So here we complete the definition, the articulating surfaces and the fibrous capsule and synovial membrane of elbow joint. Thank you very much.